In 2009, Industrial Light and Magic faced a challenge so massive, it nearly melted their machines. They were building the Devastator, a robot the size of a building, made from six construction vehicles and over 50,000 individual parts. The result? A 3D model so dense, so detailed, it pushed their render farm to the edge, and on several occasions, crushed the very workstations meant to animate it. Just one frame could take several hours, sometimes days to render. This wasn't just a digital monster, it devastated ILM's computers and render farm. So how exactly did ILM survive building the most complex CG character in film history? And why did it change the way we look at large-scale VFX 3D assets forever? The Devastator's model set new records, I kid you not. It earned a Guinness World Record status as the most complicated single CG model in a film. ILM's team described it only in superlatives. Jeff White called the Devastator the heaviest asset we've ever built, and AWN's post-Oscar presentation explicitly labeled it the most complex character ILM has ever built. At the time, no studio had tackled a single character with such an astronomical part count and polygon budget. So how did they do it? To figure that out, let's jump to the nitty-gritty details. Before we continue, the Blender market is going through the spring sale, with 25% off thousands of products from add-ons, courses, 3D models, and more. And if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of some of the best add-ons and courses out there. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The Devastator was assembled from 52,632 individual mechanical components, like dump trucks, cranes, mixers, etc., and roughly 12 million polygons. By comparison, Optimus Prime in the same film was only 20 feet tall, with around 10,000 parts, give or take. ILM stated the Devastator's parts stacked end-to-end -end would stretch to around 14 miles. The model contains extremely fine machinery detail, like cables, ladders, hydraulic hoses, guns, etc., which ILM called a phenomenal amount of detail and geometry. In other words, the Devastator geometry is an order of magnitude more complex than any previous Transformer character or typical CG creature. The model used about 6,467 separate texture map, totaling 32 gigabytes of image data. Artists painted multi-layered metal and paint shaders, and all different stuff, like base metal, decals, rust, dirt, etc., and they did that in Photoshop, and applied them via ILM's proprietary view paint tool. To achieve photorealism at 4K IMAX, ILM added minute weathering on every visible part, like tiny scratches, dents, rivets, and dirts. Initially, Michael Bay found the Devastator looking too toy-like, so VFX artists killed themselves putting this thing together with extra surface detail. The team remarked that if all the film's texture maps were printed out, they'd cover 13 football fields, reflecting the sheer scale of the asset's material data. Given the model's size, ILM implemented a multi-resolution pipeline. The Devastator and other robots were stored in five levels of detail, so off-screen or distant parts could be decimated. Animators had on-screen controls to dial each part's resolution from a low proxy, which was as small as 25k points, up to full, around 1300,000 points. In fact, at the lowest LOD, the Devastator could not be manipulated in real time in the viewport, at least at first, but all the final renders used the highest LOD at a 4K resolution. The Devastator is essentially a combination of six individual construction robots. ILM reused the rigs from each of those component robots, which were built earlier, and linked them hierarchically. This allowed the six sub-robots, each fully rigged, to assemble into a giant. Animation was mostly done by hand. A large team of around 50 animators keyframed the Devastator's movements, as well as secondary motions. They also developed creative rigging tools, for example. Artists could attach separate parts on the fly. If a gap appeared, 
they would take apart from another robot and fill the gap. Because of the model's density, ILM maintained multiple rigs and LODs, so that heavy portions could be dropped to proxies during animation. When it comes to simulation and effects, the Devastator sequences involved massive physics simulations. When the robot punches the pyramid, ILM simulated 120,000 individual bricks with rigid body dynamics, which was at the time the largest rigid body simulation ILM has ever run. For the second sand scene, the animation team used a hybrid approach, which was a fluid and a grid simulation, which defined the large scale vortex of the sand and dust, while a simple cloud simulated cone drove the particle emission. The resulting volumetric dust clouds were rendered with a 3D grid of voxels rather than sprite instancing. These specialized simulations ensured the environment matched the robot scale. Also, ILM TDs added of noise to the fluid simulation so that the dust swirled convincingly. The Devastator's sheer size demanded enormous computing resources. ILM ran its shot in full 4K IMAX, so as you can expect, the model files required huge memory. Animators working on the Devastator needed around 16 gigabytes of RAM for each one. Now it seems like nothing, but back then, 8 gigabytes of RAM was considered more than enough for 3D work. Consequently, ILM devoted around 80% of its entire render farm, which was around 7700 cores, to render Transformer 2 during peak production. Even with that, some of the Devastator frames took tens of hours to render, and they also noted that some of the Devastator shots taking 72 hours per frame on high-end machines. ILM also rebuilt parts of the pipeline, so they switched to the Foundry's Nuke for compositing to handle the large data, and upgraded render nodes to 8-core 32GB machines to meet the demands of the Devastator, which literally devastated their production. When it comes to the software involved in making the robots in Transformers, ILM delivered 46 of the film's 59 total robots, including Devastator. Digital Domain built 13 others, and the rest were some minor effects. Scott Farrar, ILM's VFX supervisor, reported that ILM put 25 models on Transformers 2 for 9 months, far above the normal 5 to 7 models. Likewise, about 50 animators were assigned, as we said before, doubling the usual team of animators. The team's core tools were using Maya for modeling and animation, and ILM's in-house pipeline, including the Xeno modeling system. Texturing was done in Photoshop with ILM's proprietary view paint, which was used to paint and project the maps onto each model. This was actually before the invention of Mari and Substance Painter, so I would say it was way harder in this regard. Also, ILM's artists employed a digital model shop workflow, so every single vehicle or robot, like a bulldozer, dump truck, cement mixer, and so on, were broken into subparts, like engines, booms, buckets, etc., and saved into a shared library. Once a piece was modeled and painted, it could be checked out by any artist. Each library part came with pre-assigned materials and textures, in rendering, the pipeline automatically applied the store textures, by the way. This allowed the Devastator to be assembled largely from pre-existing pieces. ILM estimates that 15% of the combined parts, I mean in all the robots, came from this library. In practice, Devastator 6 construction sub-robots and 6 mining vehicles were merged by snapping together their parts and adding new connectors. For example, a cement mixer became the hat. Dump trucks became the torso and legs, also a crane and a loader formed the arms, and so on and so forth. Using Maya with Zeno and this kit bashing approach kept the enormous model manageable. The Devastator's creation stained ILM's resources. For example, it was cited that Transformers 2 consumed around 154 terabytes of data versus just 20 terabytes for the first movie, mostly due to the huge robot assets. The studio set internal records for render usage. The Devastator remains a landmark in film CG. Many VFX artists and studios, especially at conferences such as Seagraph, reference the Devastator as a milestone. 
it efficiently raised the bar for what was possible with mechanical creatures on screen, and its techniques like library assembly, kit bashing, real-time LOD, advanced volumetrics and so on have influenced later VFX work. But a few years later, ILM built an even more complex character called the Driller in the Dark of the Moon with more than 100,000 parts, which were built on the Devastator's innovation. By the Devastator's record, set the precedent. And by the way, if you want a video about the Driller, let us know in the comment section down below. In short, the Devastator 3D character pushed the limits in CG, especially in the 2010s. I mean the artistic side and the software and technical side as well. And it is still cited as one of the most complex CG characters ever created. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like videos like these, please let us know in the comments section down below. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.